Hey guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, today I want to do a video that is touching on what a lot of people now are going through. Okay, the last two years has been a real struggle for a lot of people. We were put into positions that were not normal for us, whether it was isolation, conflicts in our workplace, even opinions of family and friends can cause that division and divide within who we are as a person. So this um, week, I've received an email from a lovely gentleman and he, I've got his list here of what he said in his email. And he said, my father passed away and I never got to say goodbye to him. There are things that I wish that I had said to him before he passed. And now, since the, his, his father's passing, he has been fighting with other relatives and they, his life is now in a real quandrum. So I want to address this today with regards to death and how we deal with it. You know, I've got a very unique perspective here because I understand that death is not the end of our lives, okay? But ultimately, when we do realize that this life that we are presently living, like me right now, I'm experiencing the Linda life, okay? When I pass, I may be born as a boy called Joshua. So that's going to be the Joshua life, but it's still my same soul who is incarnate into all these lives. I understand it because I've been to heaven and I, I got taught how it works. But for those of us who struggle with this concept, it can be very, very scary and something that frightens the absolute bejeebies out of us. So it is a delicate topic. And I constantly say to people, I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. If you do wish to um, talk to somebody about these concerns that you may have, please go and seek medical professional help. Okay, I always say it. There is a disclosure down in the bottom of my description in all my videos. So let's go there with the first thing that this gentleman said. I never got to say goodbye to my dad. There was things that I wish that I had said to him before he died. One, I remember floating above my body. So this today is where I talk about my personal experience and my personal perspective of what happened to me when I died. Throughout the thousands of many years that I've actually researched, this is a commonality. So I can speak some sort of truth when I say the following, based on the research that I've done into so many other people's death experiences. When we actually pass over, there is no thoughts that go through our head about, man, I wish I'd spoken to that person. I wish that I'd resolved that. I wish I'd paid that bill. Oh my God, who's looking after the cat? We don't have those thoughts because as soon as our physical body dies and we release that Linda life, we are now in a situation where we're back to our soul. We now are incorporate of every life we've ever had. We are now back into that oneness of that completeness of our connected consciousness with the source. So we don't care because we don't have a concern or even a worry about, oh man, I wish I'd resolve that fight with that person. Or, oh, how do I, how do I live here in eternity as a soul when I didn't pay my electricity bill? That sort of thing. Okay, so we don't worry about all this little stuff anymore. And I call it little stuff because it's so irrelevant. Irrelevant. It doesn't concern us because it's irrelevant. Let's imagine a little uh, metaphor here. Imagine somebody who lives in the desert. Let's go out back Australia, where it's thousands of kilometers to the coastline, okay? They never see the beach. They're stuck in sand for their whole existence. Would that person need a snorkeling goggle? No, it's irrelevant. 
They don't need it. It's not something that they concern themselves with because they're never going to go into the ocean to use a snorkel. So they, it's irrelevant. They concern themselves with more things that are relevant to their situation. So when we go back to heaven and we pass over, like even when I was floating above my body and even when I looked at my own body on the ground, I left my body and I was floating above myself. When they pulled me out on the gurney, I was there thinking, wow, look at her hair. Look at her clothes. What did they do to her clothes? That was how I thought. My God, look what they did to her hair. It wasn't me. Look at my hair. I was looking at Linda on the gurney saying, look at her hair because I was so separate. So it didn't matter that the house was a bit untidy. It didn't matter that I just had this fight with my ex-partner. It didn't matter if I'd washed up, cleaned the dog, fed out, cleaned the, um, fed the dogs. None of that concerned me anymore, okay? Because I was now back into that collective where all we feel is love and peace, okay? I explain it in my book. Here's my book, Five Years in Heaven. Okay, look how thick it is. All right, so the description to my books is down below. Okay, so I never got to say goodbye to my relative, my dead, my deceased father. There were things that I wish I had said to him. We've got to remember here our ego. Now that his part, his father has passed over, he doesn't care about a fight anymore. He doesn't care about all the things now that were said, left unsaid. It's only our guilt, our shame, and most of our, our issue if we do hang on to all those things because it's already resolved with the Father who has passed. Everything has already been resolved, and I can't stress that enough. They don't care about it anymore. It's not a concern. It's irrelevant. It's only relevant to us because we're still living in this existence where that man was our father, okay? So, I never got to say goodbye to him. There were things that I wish I'd said. So how do we um, release this so it's no longer a burden on our own shoulders? We can always write a letter to our father, even though he has passed. Because as soon as we're putting that emotion and that energy into our words as we write, he can sense it where he is through that energetic connection. Dearest Father, I wish that I told you how much I fill in the blanks. I wish that I told you I fill in the blanks. I wish that I had been there more for you. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever else you want to write in the letter, write that letter to them. Because then that is us healing all that past pain, hurts, issues, whatever we may be feeling, as to why we now feel guilty over not saying those things to him, okay? I never got to say goodbye. Well, do we really ever say goodbye to anybody? No. You will see him again. So was it really a finalization there? I believe not, okay? So that's a limited belief that we now have to dissolve in our brain and say, you know what, I, I don't have to feel bad because I am going to see him again. And when I do see him, we've both healed all our past issues, hurts, grudges, regrets, etc. We've healed our life, so what we feel is love. Okay? My relatives are now fighting with me. Here we go with ego again. Because now we've got other people who have expectations. They have their own guilts and grudges over the way things occurred. So they are the only ones who can deal with what they are feeling. Okay? Oh. Okay. Little text on my phone. Okay. Sorry about that. So when we think about people that are passing, okay, and I'll be honest here. I lost a relative. I only found out two months ago they'd passed six months ago, five months ago, whenever. I don't even know the date. How do I feel knowing that a close relative of mine died and no one in my family told me? It hurt. It feels like a betrayal and a knife through my heart. But at the end of the day, it is their issue as to why I wasn't told. It was their issue, grudge, complaint, thoughts, opinions, assumptions, whatever you want to call it. 
It was their own perspective as to why they didn't want to tell me. So how do I feel about it? I did get hurt for a day, but then I realized, you know what, Linda? I'm doing everything I can to be a better person than I was yesterday. And if they're still going to treat me the way I was a person 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, that's on them. It's not on me. If they have no concern to try and heal themselves first before they come to me and heal our relationship, that's on them. I've tried significantly over the years where I've told them, are you aware you're doing these behaviours? That's not me being nasty. That's me telling the truth of my perspective of what I see their actions are. So then they can have a think about what they're doing that causes all this ripple of negative energy. Okay? So when we've got relatives who are fighting with us, we've got to remember heightened emotions are when there's a death because it reminds us all of our own mortality. So people do get scared. People get upset. They have all these things coming up from the past because they have not healed it yet. And believe me, I've sat here over the years and I go through all my life experiences and I have healed every single one of those. And I hope that you are too. Because when we look at other people causing negativity in their own existence and then they want to shower it like acid rain all over our lives as well, you have to ask yourself, do you seriously need these people in your life? So I've looked at certain people in my close family unit. I've also looked at friends over the years who have been negative, sarcastic, abusive. I've looked at their behaviours and their repeated behaviours because I do like giving people chances. But then when they keep doing the same thing repeatedly and then you sit there banging your head on the wall saying, why can't they just understand what they're doing? But they just don't get it. Ultimately, for our own sanity, we simply must walk away. And that's my advice to this person who emailed me. Relatives are fighting with him constantly now. Does he need that negativity in his life? From all those accusations, I can imagine what his family is saying. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why? 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 is extremely negative and accusing. I don't like the why word at all. Why you're home late. That's accusing. Okay, and it also shows that you are trying to control and it also shows that you are above the other person. So the other person is actually subservient to you. Why didn't you come and clean my shoes today? Sort of like that. Why are you home late? Why didn't you pick up me? Why didn't you buy me dinner on the way home? Are you so inconsiderate? That's only our assumption that they're inconsiderate. They may have other things going through their head. So when we've got family that are fighting with us over the death of a relative, we must put things into perspective. Try not to use emotion when we're speaking to them. Because their emotions are so heightened, generally negatively, that anything we say to them is just going to go straight over their head because they are in their own firm belief system of what occurred. So it's best to respond. Responding with facts and evidence. Oh, here we go as an example. You said that I was over at Susan's house all night. Well, here's a text that I sent to you at 9.30 saying I was coming home. So I wasn't there all night. See how that's evidence. You've got the text to show. So that belief system you hold is no longer relevant or significant or even true. Okay? So we look at things in our lives and how we communicate with others. And we can bash our head against a wall all you like trying to tell someone, are you aware that you're doing this? But at the end of the day, if they're not going to listen and want to grow and become more positive people who have better loving relationships with those around you, then you've got to ask yourself, is it worth the effort? I've got a good friend 
She rang me the other day and said, Linda, I'm about to tell my daughter I never want to see her again. That took guts. Took guts. So I explained to her, it's a big call to tell someone you never want to see them again. But she stood her ground because of the repeated behaviours from the relative, the daughter. The repeated behaviours of every single time doing the same thing. We love these people so much that sometimes it is in our best interest and in our best mental health to let people go. So then it's their journey. We're not connected at the hip with people. We don't have to say, come back and be part of my family. Because your family is your tribe. It's people who think the same as you. It's people who want you to be with them. And if you are surrounded by people that don't want you in their lives, especially now that we come up to the holiday seasons, holidays and season, think about who it is that you do want to spend time with. And if you've got that relative who you think, oh God, I've got to see him again, ask yourself, then why are you? And work it out. Because ultimately, the last two years, as I said at the beginning, has been an absolute witch to a lot of people. But as I have long said for two years, it was my birthday in March 2020, I said it, this whole event is going to bring out the true colours of others. And how true was I when I said that? Over the past two years, the nasty people have shown how nasty they are. The nice, loving, giving, compassionate ones out there are still out there being generous and kind. So I want to tell you is what I've just done this morning, which is why I just got a text. I got a message from a lady. I speak to her at school. I don't know her. <clears throat> I don't even know her surname. I know her car registration because I see her sometimes at school. She said her son has just finished grade 12. He's been on a mystery bus tour overnight. Can I please go and pick him up from the bus stop? Well, there was about 20 bus stops there because it's a big interchange. I didn't know where I was going. But why do you think I went? Because I'm kind. I'm generous. I do good things for others when they get into a pickle. As long as they ask me with respect and kindness, I will do anything for anyone. Full stop. So I took some photos of her son getting off this mystery bus at 8.30 this morning. And I texted them to the mother who couldn't be there because she's at hospital with another situation. She's just replied, thank you so much for your help. That's all we have to say. Thank you so much for your help. Isn't it amazing when we can do things for others? There was nothing in it for me. No reward. And it's these little acts of kindness that makes them love us so much that they help us in our lives. So getting back to this person who lost his father. His father hasn't actually left him. We can still talk, communicate and ask for signs that he's around us. Because we will see them again. And that resolvement of all those issues will be irrelevant. We don't need to resolve anything because everything now is love and peace. His relatives that are giving him grief. This is the time for him to reflect. Who does he want to be as a person? Does he seriously need negative people around him? So you use the pros and cons list and make up a list and say, do I really need these people around me? What's the benefit? What's the gain? What do I do for them? What do they do for me? I've got a relative. I rang her every three times a week. I was ringing her for three years. I'd ring it at 8 o'clock in the morning and say, hey, how are you today? Not once does she ring me back, ever. Not even to tell me that I just lost a very close relative. So I sit here and I think, huh, why would I want you to help me do anything? Because I'm so irrelevant to them. Huh, I'm working it out every day. We're all working it out every day. 
So in closing, there is a little line here that I actually said it last night when I was talking to lovely medium Mike Cavalli doing our show on YouTube. I was talking to another friend of mine. She's had a very bad life, this friend. Hello in America, I know you're going to be watching. And this is what I said to her. She rang me, oh, we, we do um, Facebook Messenger calls about two or three times a week. I speak to her. She's in America and I'm in Australia. But I love it a bit. And she said, oh, Linda, there's something in my past I must share with you. I said, darling, no, you don't. And this is what I said because I wrote it down. I said, I love you so much that there is nothing that you can say that's going to change my mind because I don't care who you were in the past. I look at who you are today and the person that you're going to be tomorrow. That's the person I love. So I don't have any expectation about who we are in the past. As long as we say to ourselves, I'm trying my damnedest to be a better person tomorrow because that's the person I want people to remember. So I said, I love you so much that there is nothing you can say to me that will ever change how I feel about you. Because every day you are showing me that you are a better person than you were the day before. And I love the person that you are today, who is not that person of yesterday. She knows who she is. That was a true story. And I'm sharing that with everybody. Everybody needs to hear that. I don't care who you were yesterday. Get rid of your grudges, your complaints, your issues, your being offended. Get rid of it out of your head and think, is this the person I want to be tomorrow? You know, I've got people in my close circles and I look at them and I think, do you really want to be such a grudge-filled, sarcastic and abusive person tomorrow? Obviously they do because they will not ever admit to what they're doing. And they will never admit that it hurts others. So when we do have relatives that treat us this way, sometimes it's best to just walk away. Because when we close a door, a window always opens. You know, I'm going to go there. Oh, about four years ago, I had a meetup group. It was called Southside Singles. <laughs> that was the joke, sorry. It's called Southside Psychics. Because <laughs> everyone that came here was single. It was really weird. So it was virtually Southside Singles. Anyway, <laughs> but it was Southside Psychics. And, um, you know, it was just amazing, the people that used to come here for development and just having a chat with me. It was absolutely beautiful. And, um, oh, I've lost my part thought my train of thought now but you know it was such a fortunate thing that I met these people from all walks of life I opened my door and I openly said come in there's only one rule in my house treat this house like your own so people would just come in some people would just lie down go sleep they just walk to the kitchen make a coffee I wouldn't care because if they give me that respect I will always return it to them so when we look at people around us in our lives and we look at who we associate as a tribe, there was about 10 people that I met in that group. And I'd used to have parties and they'd all come. They used to trash my backyard. It would take two hours to pick up all the cigarette butts in my backyard after they were left, that sort of thing. And... Um, yeah, we, I'd put out ashtrays and stuff and they'd still just throw their cigarettes all through my yard, which I don't approve of because uh, it's my house, my rules, right? But it was so funny when I made that conscious decision that I didn't want to be a part of them anymore. They were not my tribe. And I actually told them, don't come back. Within two weeks, four new people came into my life who far outweigh the 10 who left and those four people are still best friends of mine today about four or five years later so we do get scared guys when things happen to us you know it's it's like standing on that precipice of making change you're looking down into the valley below us and we think wow do I really have to make this leap of faith today 
And it's when we consciously say, yes, and I want you to look after me, and please, Heavenly Fathers, come down and protect me in this decision I must do. They do look after us. Because that is ultimately how we do make our lives better. And it's all because of love. So today, if this has taught you anything, I've got my PayPal link below if you want to buy me a coffee. Uh, my books are down below if you do want to buy a copy of my books. I will tell you, I've now got a list of books. I've got 10 books, guys, coming out. I've got 10 books. So I've got ghost, uh, my Five Years in Heaven book. Um, Ghosts Explained is now on Lulu as well. Psychics Explained will be in out in about a week. I'm now working on Spirit Guides and Life Paths Explained. Then I'm doing Angels Explained, Auras Explained, Crystals Explained, and Love Explained, and also Sabotages Explained. So I've got a lot of books that I'm trying to work on, but ultimately you can see I'm still doing my videos and I'm still answering your emails and asking, doing videos about your questions. So I hope today that the gentleman who emailed me, I hope that this has given you some clarification today. Because that's how we make these decisions and we trust our gut. And we trust them to let us know if we are on our right path, right? And ultimately, the more we are gentle, kind, loving, forgiving, compassionate, the more we become love. Have a good day, guys. If you like today's video, share it with your friends who they may need to hear this as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye.